the annual budget worksheet is the last worksheet that you'll be completing for major assignment two. Here, you'll fill in budget expenses uh, in various categories, including a loan payment and credit card payment that you'll bring forward from the student loans and credit cards worksheets. You'll calculate a total annual budget, create a five-year projection for that, and then figure out how much additional money you have left over after paying your costs, or you might have a negative amount there. Here, you'll first fill in rows 18 through 25. So these are budget categories that you might typically see for a household. You can enter frequencies per year uh, at, that makes sense to you. For example, housing, utilities are usually going to be 12 per year, monthly costs, food. Maybe if you go shopping every week, it'll be 50, 52, and so on. Insurance might be a couple times a year. So enter the frequency per year and cost items for these categories first, and then the total annual cost in column D will just be the frequency per year times the cost. You'll want to use cell references for all of the gold shaded formula uh, cells, and the costs and total annual costs should be formatted as currency with two decimals, the frequencies as number with zero decimals. After filling in rows 18 through 25, you'll next fill in the monthly loan payment and monthly credit card payment. Here you have monthly payments. And for the cost, notice that these are formulas. So you'll need to reference cells on other worksheets. There are some notes here, one and two. And if you scroll down a bit here, you'll see that you need to use the subsidized monthly student loan payment and the maximum monthly payment, respectively, for those two entries. The easiest thing to do is to, as we saw with the within sheet transfer on the income and projection worksheet, simply type in an equal sign, navigate to the student loan sheet, and then select the monthly loan payment cell, followed by enter. If I go back to this, you'll see that this is the general form of a reference to another sheet. It's single quotes with the name of the sheet in between them, then an exclamation mark followed by the cell reference. Now we'll do the same thing for the monthly credit card payment, and then we'll fill in the total in column D as we did for the other cells. You, you'll notice that we've also formatted the costs and totals as currency with two decimals. For the total budget, we'll add up the values in column D. Uh, you should use sum for this. And then the projected total in five years will be the annual budget increased by the inflation rate that is brought forward as well from the income and projection sheet and we'll use a formula that's similar. So feel free to look back at that sheet for your work there. Finally, the remaining income at the bottom will be our projected income minus the projected total. Note the order there. We'll take the five-year income minus the projected total. 
Note that the remaining income may end up being negative depending on your costs at the top. And again, we make sure that we format our entries appropriately, in this case, still currency with two decimals. And we see from our analysis that given our costs, we have about $6,000 left over after our budget expenses. The final item in this uh, worksheet is to add a pie chart for the budget expenses. Here too, there's an interesting trick. We want to use the total annual costs here as our pie slices, but we want the budget categories as our legend. So we can again use this trick that we select one column, we click and hold the control key in Windows or on the Mac, the command key, and highlight the entries in column D at the same time. This will highlight both the column A and the column D entries without also highlighting the intermediate columns B and C. As you've done on DQs, you use the insert menu to add a pie chart. Here, we want a 2D pie. Note that the legend is already created for us. We have a chart title that we will now change. And we're still missing one element here, which is the percentage labels, which we can add by using the data labels item. Pick whatever you like here. However, this is the amounts and not the percentages. So if we format the data labels now, we can add the percentage, remove the value, and that will give us what we, what we would like. We then move the pie chart over to the area designated for it over on the right. And that concludes our work on this sheet, as well as for major assignment two.